because he is worthy of it. Amen. He's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the honor. And uh, he's worthy of the praise. And we're going to um, lift up the name of Jesus through the word right now. And ask that God will come and prepare our minds for service and help us to have self-control, O oh Father. All your hope is in the gift of grace that is ours in Jesus Christ, who has shown it uh, to us. And we thank God because he is merciful. Uh, his uh, grace and his mercy are everlasting. And I, I wanted to share... Uh, if you um, heard those wonderful songs that have uh, been lifted up um, before, um, we'll play a little bit of those at the end of this meditation on this Sunday <clears throat> evening. Uh, it's a new time. The time has changed and the clock has rolled. I'm back, which reminds us that um, all those situations change, and all the, um, the time changes. Um, people change, and amen. And our situations change, but we thank you because our God, uh, He never changes. We want to take a look at First Peter. Very briefly, First Peter. I pray that if, um, if you made it to service today and if you are in a fellowship that celebrates the Eucharist, that uh, you enjoyed um, the fellowship of the believers. Where Christ has said, forsake not the assembly of the, of the brethren. First Peter, the first verse of the first chapter. From Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, the God's chosen people who are away from their homes and are scattered all around the countries of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. God planned long ago to choose you by making you his holy people, which is the Spirit's work. God wanted you to obey him and to be made clean by the blood of the death of Jesus Christ. And grace and peace be yours more and more. Praise be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In God's great mercy has caused us to believe and to be born again into a living hope because Jesus Christ rose from the dead. That's First Peter, um, the first chapter and um, Verse 1 of through 3. First Peter, the first chapter. Verse 1 through 3. And, um, now let's bow and ask the Lord, Father God, to bless this word. And let it not go out of the way. And we thank God for all of the many blessings that he has bestowed upon us. Isn't uh, it wonderful to be able to serve the Lord and to worship him in spirit and in truth? His name is worthy to be praised. It's the very thought of his wonderful words. Hallelujah. Um, it's worthy to be praised. We thank him tonight. God, we pray that you will bless this word. Let it not go out void, but let someone be encouraged and inspired to move on through this week. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. And then let us take a look at Mark, the sixth chapter, verse 30. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him about all the things that they had done and taught. Crowds of people were coming and going so that Jesus and his followers did not even have time to eat. He said to them, 
Come away by yourselves, and he will go to a lonely place to get some rest. And so they went in a boat by themselves to a lonely place. But many people saw them leaving and recognized them. So from all the towns, they ran to the place where Jesus was going, and they got there before him. And when he arrived, he saw a great crowd waiting. He felt sorry for them. <clears throat> So from all the towns, they ran to the place where Jesus was going, and they got there before him. And when he arrived, he saw a great crowd waiting. He felt sorry for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And so he began to teach them many things. And when it was late in the day, his followers came to him and said, No one lives in this place, and it is already very late. Send the people away so they can go to the countryside and towns around here to buy themselves something to eat. But Jesus answered, you give them something to eat. And they said to him, if we would all have a work, uh, we would all have to work a month to earn enough money to buy that much bread. And Jesus asked them, how many loaves of bread do you have? Go and see. And when they found out, they said, five loaves and two fish. And then Jesus told his followers to have the people sit in groups on the green grass. And so they sat in groups of 50 or 100. And Jesus took the five loaves and two fish and looking up to heaven, he thanked God for the food. He divided the bread and gave it to his followers for them to give to the people. And then he divided the two fish among them all. And all the people ate and were satisfied. And the followers filled 12 um, baskets with the leftover pieces of bread and fish. And there were 5,000 men who ate. I want to talk uh, very briefly on the subject of what God is able to do with the sprinkling of blood and a piece of bread. What God is able to do with the sprinkling of blood and a piece of bread. What God is able to do with the sprinkling of the blood and a piece of bread. You know that in this life, um, we will <clears throat> be faced with various uh, challenges. Um, we have uh, challenges in our economy uh, globally. Uh, folks are, are struggling uh, to make ends meet because of the lack of resources. And, um, we uh, go uh, without so much. Um, tonight, there are men and women and even children in this world who are going without shelter. Uh, there Tonight, somewhere in the world, there is a child who is going to bed hungry and who has never seen a week uh, where daily um, they were able to receive uh, three meals out of the day. There are so many challenges that we are faced with in this life. There are uh, men and women amongst us who have lived their entire life and have never seen a week where they did not experience pain, where they did not experience some sort of sickness, where they um, uh, did not have to go and uh, see a doctor. Somebody has been um, laying on a hospital bed, um, hallelujah, in a hospital for um, it seems like forever. Maybe you've been there for a month. Maybe you have been there for a few weeks. Maybe you have been there for a few days. There are so many uh, challenges. Amen. And today, a lot of uh, congregations have experienced the, the feeling of leadership uh, um, missing from your body. Your pastor has passed away, or perhaps you are in the search of 
a new a pastor and you feel as if there is no leadership. Well, I want to encourage you tonight uh, because we serve a God who is able to do much uh, with just a little. And uh, you ought to be encouraged tonight because First Peter, the first chapter, uh, reading verses 1 through 4, we see what God is able to do with just one sprinkling of blood. Because in First Peter, um, the first chapter and the second verse, it uh, explains how God selected us as his people, and he did it with just a little bit of blood. Isn't that good news tonight, that God is able to take a little bit and turn it to much? With just a sprinkle of blood, he is able to redeem his church. Secondly, um, in Mark the sixth chapter, we find another story of how Christ took uh, uh, two fish and five loaves of bread and was able to fill um, the stomachs of a multitude. Um, hallelujah. Someone needs to be encouraged as you are going through this month of November, and perhaps you are worried how you are going to pay your bills. Perhaps you are worried how you're going to make ends meet. Perhaps you are worried about um, the holidays coming up and you don't know how you're going to uh, feel the desires of your children and put gifts under the tree and keep the lights on and keep the water on. Well, we serve a God who is able to take just a little bit and turn it into much. Uh, because First Peter 1 and 2 tells us with just a little blood, he redeems us. Hallelujah. And Mark the sixth chapter tells us that it just takes a little bread for him to feed us. Uh, in closing, uh, we have celebrated the Holy Eucharist, which means thanksgiving. In Mark the sixth chapter, we see that our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, he, he asked um, the men and the women who uh, were gathered near him in Mark the sixth chapter, and they were gathered because uh, they were lost. They did not have any leadership. They were gathered because they were uh, looking. They were looking for knowledge, and they were looking for wisdom. They were looking for somebody to guide them. They were gathered, hallelujah, when all of a sudden it became dark, and um, they, they not only did it become dark, but it said that they were afar off. They were afar off from all of the restaurants. They were afar off from all of the fast food places. They were afar off from all of the gas stations. And somebody said, look, it, it's getting dark, Jesus. Why don't you uh, send these people on their way so that they can make it to the countryside. It's getting dark and there's nobody uh, around them to help them. And perhaps you're in a moment in your life where it is dark and it seems like there's no one to help you. There's a hallelujah, no um, lesson uh, to be learned. There's no one to help you. There's no one uh, to guide you. There's no one to instruct you. And it's getting dark and you feel as though um, you are afar off. There is good news on tonight, hallelujah, dear listener, because, uh, praise God, uh, we find out that when it gets dark uh, and when you are far off, that's when God is able uh, to do uh, his best work. Uh, Jesus looks at the men and he says, uh, uh, why don't you just go and, and see how much bread you have? He was putting the world to the test. He said, go and see what you can do with the little. And the men, they looked at each other and they were confused. They said, we have uh, no bread and uh, it would take a month's worth of labor in order for us, hallelujah, to feed all of these men and women. But Jesus said, just go and uh, take what you have and I'll do the rest. That's what God is speaking, um, hallelujah, on someone's life tonight. Just give me two minutes. He's speaking it 
on your life. Hallelujah. But if you just give God the little bit that you have, if you just give God, um, hallelujah, the little that you have, the little bread that you have, the little fish that you have, if you give God the little praise that you have, the little worship that you have, the little time that you have, the little talent that you have, hallelujah, that he says that he will do the rest. Well, the men, they were um, obedient to what Christ instructed them to do, and they went out to see just how uh, much uh, bread was in the camp, hallelujah, and somebody uh, looked in their basket and they had a little bread. Y'all know the story. It says that there was a little boy and he had two fish and five loaves of bread. There was a little boy who had packed a lunch because uh, he had knew that there was work to do. There was a little boy, but he was packing a lunch, but he did not anticipate that God wanted to do something special with his lunchbox. Uh, isn't that good news tonight? And when the men came back to Jesus, they said, well, we, we have uh, these little fish and uh, we have these uh, uh, little loaves of bread. But Jesus, this isn't enough uh, to feed um, the multitude. And somebody tonight is crying out and you're saying, I have a few pennies to pay the bills. I have a few groceries in the pantry, but this isn't enough, hallelujah, to feed my family during the week. I have a few pills of medicine to, to heal me, but this isn't enough to make this sickness and this pain go away. Jesus uh, is crying out as he did, hallelujah, and we're finished uh, in uh, Mark the sixth chapter, and he says, just give it uh, to me. Just give it to me. Hallelujah. And when they gave the bread and the fish to Jesus, uh, Jesus gave thanks. And I have a question for you. If Jesus is able to give thanks over a little, why is it that we are complaining? Why is it that we are confused? Why is it that we are worried? If Jesus is able to give thanks over our little bit, our minute resource, then we ought to be giving God praise, hallelujah, on this first week uh, as we enter into a second week of November, as we enter into a new dispensation of time, we ought to be giving God the thanks. And it says that when he gave thanks, he broke the bread. And when he broke the bread, he was able to feed the multitude. And he fed them until, hallelujah, their stomachs and their appetites were filled. And, oh, I, I just wonder, I got to get off of here, how uh, nutrition, how much nutrition was in that meal. I believe that there was so much nutrition that the blind began to see again. There was so much nutrition that the lame began to walk again. There was so much nutrition, hallelujah, that they received eternal life. How do you know that they received eternal life? Because First Peter, the first chapter and the second verse that said, with just the sprinkling of the blood, we have been elected as the family of God. And you ought to run and tell that what God can do with just a sprinkle of blood and a little bit of bread. Man, and we know that Jesus, he is the bread and he is our eternal life. And we bless his name on tonight. We give him all of the glory, all the honor and the praise. Thou whose almighty word, chaos and darkness heard and took their flight. Hear us, we humbly pray, and where the gospel day sheds not its light, let there be light. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen and amen.